few of our watchers um, have asked about making beer um, and we do we do make our own beer uh, unlike the cider and the, the gorse wine and, and so on that we make which we make completely from scratch we do tend to cheat a bit on the beer um, three teenage boys and plus me um, plus various people helping out we need quite a good volume of beer so we do tend to use um, pre-prepared malt to make it rather than toasting barley and all the rest of it and after 30 odd years of making beer, um, I finally discovered that the key to it is using um, this really good um, malt, which we get from Belgium, from a company called Brew Firm. Um, so this is just the result of toasting barley, then sparging it with water to get um, like a kind of caramelly, sugary mixture, which is the basis of the beer. So we use that and some yeast. And uh, with this, we got it quite cheap. It was um, this was these were seven pounds on offer. I guess a sort of pre-Brexit or something deal. So um, with with this malt, we can either make a small vat of twelve liters, really quite strong, a little bit like a sort of Belgian Lefe type beer, or we can add some sugar and then make it up to twenty liters, and it would be a sort of a bit of a lighter, sort of more lagery type beer. But because we got it cheap, <laughs> we're going to make a 12 litre version because to be honest with you, it is better. Uh, these I think were £7.50 each um, and that's the only ingredient we need. So that's going to work out at uh, 12 litres, uh, that will give us what, uh, 24 um, half litre bottles uh, for £7, which is what, 30 or 30p a bottle or something. And I promise you it's much better than anything you buy in the shops other than the uber expensive proper Belgian beers that you can buy. Um, so the other equipment we need, thermometer. Um, kind of got this out against my better instinct really. I, I hardly ever use them, but um, if you're new to this, it might be worth using one because when you put the yeast in, you want the temperature of the must to be, to be about right. I can tell by dipping my finger in, it needs to be just lukewarm. Um, but a thermometer would help. And also um, hydrometer, you've seen us using this for the cider making to measure the specific gravity. Again, um, I know I don't need it because I know that making this the recipe I make it, it's going to be about 5% and I don't really care anyway. But if you want to know exactly how strong your beer is going to be, you need a hydrometer as well. Um, normally when we're making cider, we make it on site, as you've seen in the cidery, so we don't have to lug, you know, tons of apples and things around. Most of our other brewing, we tend to do back at base at home. And you can see in here, um, we're quite well equipped for the home brewing. We've got a few things knocking around on the go. Um, up on the top here, we've got a couple of wheat beers maturing, and then on the left in that uh, enameled cask is a, um, a very dark, uh, beer we've made for Christmas, which is sitting there maturing. Also up there, um, we've got some elderberry balsamic vinegar, which we made from elderberry wine that we boiled down on top of the on top of the wood burning stove for a day to make it thick. It's just it's just like balsamic, but better. Up here, um, this is a elderberry port that's just finishing off, and also the the big old glass carboy that we use sometimes for. Um, the cider and, and, and elderberry port as well. So, plus a whole collection of bottles of various other bits and pieces um, in here for, for making beer. And the other important part of it is the airing cupboard, which I won't bother showing you, but the airing cupboard is, I find, a great place just for getting the beer to, to do its initial fermentation. And then once we've bottled it, which you'll see later on, um, putting the, the, the bottled beer in there as well, just to get the 
um, in bottle fermentation done as well. So we're going to start now. This is really dead easy. Um, it, it, it's such a cheat compared to the cider and the homemade wines that we make. All we're going to do is just take this malt, soften it up a bit, uh, put it in here, make it up to 12 litres at the right temperature using a mixture of boiling and cold water and then stir in the yeast. It's, it is really that easy. Um, so let's go. So what we've done so far is just opened up the turf mould and we've softened this up a little bit in, in a pan of hot water. And, and if you're doing this at home, um, wear some gloves or something because you might, you might burn yourself. But, um, so that's the mould going in. And that was good advice of mine to wear some gloves because um, that is actually getting pretty warm. So. So I'm just putting on a, putting on a random mitt. And I've also bought a kettle of water and we'll just use that to like squish out all the inside so we don't waste the thing because I mean, we don't mind wasting anything in this house. And we'll add that in as well. And while I'm doing that, just down here on my right is um, is the yeast, which is just in a little bit of body temperature water, um, just to get it just to get it started off. You can see it's already it's really going to fizz a little bit um, on the top, but we'll we'll just leave that for we'll just leave that for a little bit leave that for a little bit longer, um, and then what we're going to do is just stir this, add a bit more hot water, sorry this is really, you know, it's just a really trial and error as I say, if you're new to making beer then you know, use a thermometer for this to get it right, but roughly speaking, a couple of kettles of hot water, make sure it's all nicely dissolved. If you speak to a lot of beer makers, they'll say that the, the, the key to beer is the water. And we're very lucky living in Scotland because we've got really great water for making beer. So, starting with our tap water, stirring it through. Twelve liters, and that is the thermometer. That's perfect. It's just just lukewarm. It's not not body temperature, but um, a little bit warmer than room temperature just to, get it, to get it started. Um, so making beer is genuinely that easy. Um, it's so easy, I feel embarrassed about making this video because everything else we do, I'd like to think, requires a bit of thought. Um, all that's left to do now is to add this yeast, which is just beginning to froth up there, into the must. Just get it all in there. Not done there. Stir it in. Top on, um, click it down, check we've got water in the airlock to stop any um, insects or wild yeast getting in. Click down the top, and then I'll check on that in you know, 24, 48 hours, um, and it should start to ferment and bubble away. We've got a bit of a flourish to begin with, with it, with it bubbling a lot, and then it will slow down. After about two weeks in the airing cupboard, 
this will then be ready to bring back out and, and bottle. That's making beer. Two weeks later, and the beer's been in the airing cupboard, and, and it's now um, fermented through, so it's been kept reasonably warm for the last two weeks. So we brought it through, and the, the first way that we can tell that it's ready to be bottled is by looking at the, looking at the airlock. So it hasn't bubbled for at least a couple of days now. Um, so we know that it's not producing any carbon dioxide anymore, so the fermentation is probably finished. But also, when we, when we look inside, we can see that the beer is quite clear and looks finished. And we could test this with a hydrometer, which is what I should really do, and the specific gravity would be pretty close to one. But alternatively, um, the way I always do it is just take a quick, uh, take a quick taste. And I can, that tastes bitter and dry and it just tastes like it's ready to go. There's no sugar left in it. So it's ready to bottle. Um, over here, I think he's um, just sterilizing a few bottles with some, uh, we just use a German actually steriliser, um, just to make sure everything's absolutely clean. And the bottles we're using are also German top beer bottles that have had about 50 different brews in them during their lifetime already. And they're like a, a, a flip top version, so they're really easy to use. So what we're gonna do now is to start the bottling and we need a few things for that we need the, the beer we need the bottles and we also need um, some sugar to to prime the bottles and a set of scales because we're going to have to add to these 33 centiliter bottles we're going to have to add about two and a half grams of sugar to get a nice bottle fermentation to give it the fizz um, but without it being so much that it explodes. So what we do now is we'll film the bottling um, and adding a little bit of sugar to each and we'll put it on the time lapse. So that was, um, that was 12, 12 litres of beer, um, now turned into two crates of beer. Each of these bottles is primed with two and a half grams of, uh, of sugar. So it then needs to go back in the airing cupboard for a couple of weeks to allow that sugar that's in here now to ferment and, and give it the, um, the CO2 in the, in the bottle. And then at least a month really sitting in the cellar um, on a nice stone floor keeping cool um, so this be ready you know for kind of Christmas holiday time um, looking forward to drinking it we'll show it to you then it's now December and the beer's been in the cellar <laughs> for two months and it's ready to drink so we're going to open it and see what happens Who'd like a bit? Me. Me. Whoa! <laughs> that one was a little bit livelier than the rest. I can tell. Two, three, cheers. Cheers. cheers.